Hello everyone, myself Vidansh. I am B.Tech Engineering Physics 4th year student. My topic of presentation is slow and fast neutron detection. Here is the overview of the talk. I will start with introduction, then why it is important, physics behind it, the detection using charged particle reactions, prison chambers, bifoil activation, proton recoil methods, and some advanced methods, and finally conclusion. So our aim is to detect neutrons and neutrons do not directly ionize atom. So they are detected indirectly upon producing a charged particle, a photon or by taking part in the reaction, which is then detected by using an appropriate detector. It can involve a optic reaction, uh, which is N alpha, N proton, N gamma or N fission. It may involve elastic scattering, which produces a recoiling nucleus. It may involve an elastic scattering, which produces an excited nucleus. Actually, uh, it is important to detect neutrons because in plasma physics, neutron detection is used in experiments such as GET. In particle physics, it, it, it involves in enhancing neutrino detectors in cosmic ray detection. Uh, secondary neutrons are component of particle showers created in Earth's atmosphere by cosmic rays. In power plants, neutron detectors are used to maintain optimal neutron flux. And in material science, it enables experimentalists to characterize the morphology of materials. So it has wide range of applications. Uh, the interaction of uh, neutrons with matter may involve absorptive reactions uh, and uh, typical absorptive materials used in have a uh, high cross section for absorption of neutrons and include uh, helium-3, lithium-6, boron-10 and uranium-235. It may involve activation process which is producing products that decay sometimes later and uh, indium, gold, rhodium, iron, aluminium, niobium and silicon are some examples of elements of large cross section. It may involve elastic scattering. Uh, the elastic scatter of a neutron through a recoiling charged nucleus can be detected by means of light that is scintillation or electric charge that is ionization energy loss. So the first case is using charged particle reaction. We can divide the reactions into two uh, parts that is endothermic reactions and exothermic reactions. Endothermic reactions are used for fast neutrons and exothermic for thermal neutrons. For thermal neutrons uh, detection, the reactions generally used are with boron, with lithium and with helium. Uh, with boron, it produces alpha and seven lithium. Uh, with lithium-6, it produces alpha and tritium and with helium, it produces uh, proton and uh, tritium. Actually, the kinetic energy of the product uh, form uh, is uh, Q value plus the energy of the neutron. If the Q value is large, then it makes detection easy, but measurement of energy of neutron that is En becomes difficult. The first one is PF3 counter. It is a proportional counter filled with PF3 gas. And when the neutron strikes with BF3, the reaction products are alpha and lithium-7. 96% of lithium-7 goes to the ground state by emitting a gamma. And the reaction cross-section in this case is large. The energy dependence of the cross section is of the 1 by V type and the commercially available counters have a specification which includes sensitivity, dimensions, composition of the filling gas, operating voltage and maximum operating temperature. These uh, counters are uh, operated generally at uh, around 1000 volt to 3000 volt and at a pressure of 1 to 2 atmospheric pressure. The second is boron lined counters. Actually, they are uh, also gas filled proportional counters that imply the same reaction as the BF3 counter 
except that the boron is coated on the walls. So boron uh, is coated on these walls of the detector and uh, only one of the two particles has a chance of entering the sensitive volume of the counter that is if the reaction is producing lithium 7 and alpha then only one will get in, into the sensitive volume of the counter the sensitivity increases with the thickness of the boron coating and actually these are, these are used to detect neutrons in intense gamma fields another one is fission chambers uh, actually the fission chambers are also gas detectors but uh, they are operated at ionization region uh, voltage so the surface is coated with the fissile isotope and the thickness of the fissile material coating should be less than the range of the fission fragments it can be used for both fast and thermal neutrons they are used for counting the number of neutrons but not the energy the next method is by foil activation it involves creation of a radioisotope by neutron capture and subsequent counting of the radiation emitted by that radioisotope. Activation foil is uh, placed in an area with neutron presence for set period of time. Once exposure is complete, the foil must be taken to a sensitive detector to read out. This is typically done with the with thin window geeker counter uh, for beta emitting foils or uh, uh, NAI crystal detector for gamma emitting foils. The another method is proton recoil methods. In this, neutron is gets collided with proton and transfers its energy to proton. Uh, and the presence uh, of the proton uh, justifies the presence of neutron. But uh, due to initial energy of photon, a relationship between a neutron energy spectrum and a pulse height distribution of the struck protons is not simple. Complex calculation needs to be performed in order to find the relationship between the detected proton energy and neutron energy. There are some adv advanced methods also like pocket sized neutron detector made with semiconductor rich in lithium phase, which is shown here. Lithium scintillators and organic scintillators crystal spectrometers, semiconductor detectors and detectors which include time of flight methods, compensated ion chambers, self-powered neutron detectors which are also known as SPND. So neutron detection is more complicated and more difficult than detection of either charged particles or photons because of no charge and a very wide energy range that is around <coughs> 10 to the power 10 electron volt. We have discussed different methods of detection of neutron and some of the methods were for counting the number of neutrons only whereas some includes energy measurements. There are challenges including pulse height estimation methods, uh, cost and less interaction in cross section of neutrons. Measurements involving high detection rates cause large background noise. Uh, reducing it is still a challenge in this area. The reference I used in making this presentation is the measurement and detection of radiation by Nicholas book and some of the websites show here. Thank you.